everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week 5 of the fall 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Hi! And finally, we have Taylor. Hello! And we also have Sasha joining in. He'll come in later for Fire Force, but uh, before we get into that, I'm just going to mention real quick. Uh, we do have a couple of anime news, but I'm just going to mention uh, that uh, Kaguya-sama got the OVA and Season 3 announced, so it's super exciting. I uh, can't wait for that. Um, and then we have, uh, there's, uh, there's soon, I want to talk about the Demon Slayer movie again, and also uh, the rumor that uh, Sony's going to acquire Crunchyroll, but I kind of want to wait till Sasha gets on, because I'm pretty sure he'd be most interested in that, so I'll wait for that. Um, we'll start- talk about Crunchyroll, or do, do you think he cares about that? Um, I guess I'll mention it here then. I, Okay. Sure. I it kind of it kind of ties together, but like, but, oh, that's my bad then. Uh, because uh, because you know, Ufotable is is owned by Anaplex, and Anaplex is owned by Sony, and so, so like, uh, Sony's been having this. They mentioned it as strategy. They want to be um, they want, what was it? They, they want more focus on anime because they see it as a huge growth sector, and uh, like, just I actually heard this rumor before too about how uh. They were already planning on, on talking about acquiring control, but uh, like they were saying, it was too expensive. So I thought at that point it was already. I thought that like it was just a rumor. I thought it wasn't gonna happen because they, like, I thought they got back off. But apparently they negotiated the price down, so it sounds like it is gonna happen. Um, and so like I just, I just really need to mention it because, it was like because Sony already owns Funimation. And so if they own Crunchyroll and Funimation. They have a a huge monopoly on like on anime in general, especially streaming, uh, just for like outside Japan, because because Funimation besides the U.S. here they own, um, they own Anime Labs in Australia and they own this other um streaming site in Europe. So, and that and that Crunchyroll announced like a they already announced a partnership with like Viz Media in Europe. So there's a, so the if they own both of them like that's. A huge like consolidation with just anime itself and they also like invested a lot they invested like 100 million in bdbd in china so they're starting to like get big there too and so like it's just a really big deal like less competition and usually what when that happens in media like the, the one thing i'm pretty sure is gonna happen is that like the prices got increased kind of like how netflix just recently announced like they increased the price and they did a couple years back too i'm pretty sure that uh, when it Sony gets both like control and Funimation, they're like slowly increase the price over time. They're just gonna do like a dollar per month increase, just like Netflix does. And also, um, yeah. another thing too is that uh, uh, right now, um, license fees for anime studios like they're they're really expensive because they have to compete because Crunchyroll and Funimation also have to compete with Amazon and Netflix for especially for ex- exclusives. So a lot of shows sometimes like the fun they the actually mining it is from licensing fees and so there's less competition there's less less um they get less money for licensing fees so then like studios get less money so just kind of kind of like not good overall for like, anime studios so and then that's like the main part i want to get there's like there's other things too but like i'm just really worried about consolidation and do you do you think crunchyroll itself will improve from this or do you think it's still gonna remain? Or do you think it's become trash like the like the Funimation app or the Funimation streaming app service? Was, not, was always bad. The the, big, Funimation subtitle like subbing is so bad. It is really it's, bad. It's always been bad. Yeah, back me up. Back me up, Taylor. <laughs> okay. We're yeah, done. it's it's pretty <laughs> terrible. Um, but it's not even just the subtitles. It's also like the actual interface. Like everything about it is so glitchy. Half the time you can't even get it in the language that you want it in. Pretty not great. Yeah, and yeah, the thing the thing is um. Uh, when they bought Funimation, they didn't really change much about it either. So if this happens, the party are just gonna keep it the same. Oh god! Especially because um, okay. it's the one thing about Sony is like their biggest weakness is that like there's like no synergy between any like the departments or any of the subsidiaries. So like they're all so separate, and because um because you know they they own Anaplex, but like they don't do anything special with like, Anaplex and Funimation. They, like Anaplex just gives away like like Sword Art and. Demon Slayer to Country Roll, even though it's technically their competitor. So, <laughs> like, and, yeah. And also, like, and 
you know, it technically be under Sony Pictures, so it's like the worst performing part of the, the company. But usually they leave things alone, so I don't really see things change. Besides, like, the only thing I'm worried about is just, like, it's just the other part, just, like, being a monopoly and slowly increasing the price. Well, shit. Okay. So that's, like, my biggest <laughs> worry. Otherwise, you know what? That's, like, my worry. Realistically, probably nothing will change or whatever control is going to do, it's probably going to do anyways. So. Time will tell, sir. Yeah, we'll see. But it'll be it'll be interesting. Yeah, thanks for the info, man. Yeah, and then the other part, I'll just it's just even there. Actually, I can just say it here. I'll just I'll just repeat. The more important here. thing was the more important thing was the the uh, the, the Tony and Crunchyroll thing. That's like the most important thing. But even there, I can just say real quick that um just reached 100 million in box office in Japan. I think it was like the fastest selling fastest selling movie to get 100 million. So already the highest grossing Shonen Jump movie in Japan, and number two in the world behind uh, Dragon Ball Super. The, the Broly movie. So actually, when it, when Demon Slayer comes out here, it'll probably be like the highest grossing like Shonen Jump um, movie. So big deal, super big deal. Let's see, we'll see unless we're locked up again at that point. We'll see, yeah. So <laughs> so super big deal for Demon Slayer, and also again on my you photo you photo on my Anaplex. So part of again Sony is like big push into into like more anime, more more media. So like they realize they can't they can't compete. Like in general, with like Amazon and Netflix, but they they control like the content, so they're trying to do that, like specialize in that area. So okay, gotcha. So that was a long, long rant. When I scroll straight ahead to Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, I just okay. want to mention right first thing, Tren, we got your panda, and when he talked, Barely. I was like super surprised. I was like, holy shit, this guy, this panda's talking. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a, a, a mascot that just, just says random noises. I didn't re- expect it to talk. But the other guy is the guy that just makes random yeah. random uh, words that apparently only can be what sushi or something with like in rice, rice, rice balls. balls okay. Yeah. Uh, toppings too. Yeah. Basically ingredients. I think it's what it called. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, definitely surprising. And of course, they, like, they don't even have a special name for the panda. He's just called panda. Just like Tekken. Oh, God. Which is for finance, whatever. But we finally got him. I can't wait to actually see more about him. And I like it how it's just like we're going to be entering like a tr- uh, was it the uh, the tournament arc pretty soon for the oh, show. So fast. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just feels really weird to have a tournament arc right away. But yeah, especially since the MC MC is currently it's incapacitated. Like, it's like, it's technically <laughs> died, but like just the cop out thing again. So. It's show and jump, man. I should, I should, I shouldn't be surprised, but like I always want them to go with, to go with it, like actually commit to having a main the main character die. They never do it, so. But if you kill off well, the main character, who's going to star the show, David? I don't know. That's that's for the right. That's for the author to decide to to, to deal I mean, with. They could take. They could try to take somebody else out instead, I guess, and like you know, instead of like going with the cop out with like with the MC. Because I mean, I guess like if they would kill the MC off now, like what. What would they have done? Like, what were you hoping that they would somehow like bring him back, or do you think they would have no, just like no? I, if people die, they need a, this ain't Dragon Ball strand. People die, they okay. need to stay dead. Okay, okay. So then, would you just have the MC as the guy that makes like shadows? Probably. I mean, shadow he, creatures. Really, him as an MC? Come on. It's really like early, so yeah, it's hard to say like how good he would be as main character. But I'm, I'm always down for for for, for people to try. No, because if they killed off the MC, I would have dropped the show. Kind of like how <laughs> Talentless Nana I dropped that show. Spoilers! Dude, episode one or two, whatever. It yeah, doesn't I, matter. The, after, I think it was after two. I think I was done. I think it's just basically, it's just like, I don't know, man. When, you, when you're, when well, it's like, how, how are you going to be able to kill, you know, keep that shit up? Like, you talk to nobody else besides the people who've gotten missing. Anyway, fuck that show. We don't have to talk about it. Um, <laughs> Damn. Okay, I guess. Um, uh, but yeah, I think uh, Taylor, you were getting also kind of I don't know want to say bored, but your thoughts on the episode. No, no, I'm definitely getting bored. <laughs> I don't really know why, and it might have just been a mood thing. Um, because like, I watched it today and I had no sleep, so it definitely could have been my mood. But hmm. I don't know. I guess I just feel like it, like it's not even like there's anything really wrong with the show i'm just kind of thinking it might not be like the show for me so like no hits on the show or anything it's not like it did anything wrong 
Um, I just feel like I just feel like they're introducing so many characters and I haven't even really started to care about any of the original ones yet. Mm. Um, and like the pacing's weird. It's all the same stuff I said last week and it's, I'm just starting to kind of fall out of it. But this happens to me a lot with a lot of Shonen stuff. Like I was really interested in the premise of Dr. Stone, but eventually I just got bored of that one too. So See, it might just not be my genre. Okay. So I'll say two things. One is like, I totally get where you're coming from because that happens to me of other shows too, where I'm just like not in the mm. mood to watch it. And mm-hmm. the second is that, like, this is what we were talking about with shonen tropes. Like, exactly <laughs> when we were when you were confused about like what we we're saying the first couple episodes. This is the shonen tropes we're talking about. <laughs> it, so. it, the the one thing though that I um they are they actually did show a little bit more into the characters with the uh yeah. the shadow guy. It's definitely Megami. feeling like it's going I, really quick. Mega me, yeah. I didn't even know that was his name, dude. I t- I knew that was his name. But it's like I swear that was a girl's name. Like I swear, like only like. Or maybe it's like one of those like general neutral games. I didn't realize it, but then it's he confirms. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a girl's name. Yeah. It's well, yeah, they, a sex name, I guess. Now, so. yeah. Well, they even mentioned it in the episode too. He ba- they basically just named him Megami, regardless of his uh, of his uh, of his of his sex. So. And then, wh- which I didn't even know, I didn't even remember ever hearing Megami. Do we do we ever hear that name, or do we hear the other name? He, they said no. It. You hear the other name. They always they always call him Fushiguro. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, because I, I think I would have noticed. My phone heard Megami. He I thought it was himself. What? Like it's like whenever he first introduced himself, and then also like later on, I think at the school they mentioned his full name too. That's where I saw Megami. It's like, wait, uh, that's his name, Megami. <laughs> yeah, I completely missed that before. Yeah, <laughs> terrible me. So, um, I actually, I don't know. I felt like I felt like they did his like kind of backstory better than the other girl. I felt like hers oh, yeah, was for more, sure. Hers was yep. like it was hard to relate. Whereas like like uh, Megami, like I definitely felt more of a connection to him. So I definitely like him as a character more now. See, it's because he's a guy, though. No, is that really what <laughs> it's it was? Because like <laughs> the the setup for like the girls, like that was just really weird. Like, of course, it just it didn't yeah. make more sense. Whereas like I felt more of a personal connection to like the guy's backstory, or how because he's a guy. They had the no. same amount no. of air. No, no, because we know more. Cause we... No, because hers seemed so forced and weird. Yeah. Like okay, we know about it, but it didn't matter, and it wasn't well, very like well, relatable or interesting. Like it I mean, was that plus, even more relatable. But no, it, but it was that plus what we've also known of this guy more than the the main girl. Like what we just kind of got introduced to her was basically the last he's, episode. He's more, connect, the... he's more connected to the main character too. He spent like more more interactions with him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, know. but for backstory that shouldn't matter. It should just depend on their like the premise of the story, right? Like what drives them. Well, I mean, her, what drove her was basically like she's from the country. Some other girl got made fun of, and that she's carried that with her her whole life. That's like really all I got from it. Mm. It just wasn't that interesting. Yeah, I suppose because there wasn't. Uh, I mean, I guess to us, we couldn't understand the deep bond that they had, or that she developed with that uh, with that one city girl. But mm-hmm. I, I feel like maybe it's because it's a girl, or no. just the fact that we don't like a character. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. No. I, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> I still think we'll get more of a backstory on her. I think it's just more like we just have to because yeah. like, like the the training arc that's coming up. They always kind of go. They always go back into more of those characters. Like yeah. they're just they're just about to lose and they get like the like the power up in a sense. Like where they was it they find within themselves and then they go through. Like, we see some backstory flashes and stuff. The sh- the show and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose, but like so, I, I didn't I didn't feel like uh, emotionally driven with his backstory. Just like how I wasn't driven with uh, the girl's backstory. I mean, like so I it wasn't like, like it super flat. like emotional, but I, I don't know. I just felt they're giving flashes of it. Yeah. Basically, I just want to say that they both kind of sucked. <laughs> but okay. uh, Yeah. So kind of like with Taylor, I'm like I'm not much going on. Like I don't really hate it. I still enjoy it, but there's really no impact for me. I just so. I just think that, like, for me, it's, like, in this weird middle ground of, like, I either, like, really messed up or dramatic or intense shows that are, like, pretty twisted or at Mm -hmm. least have more, like, um, I don't know, complicated, um, like, storylines. I'm trying to think of the right words. Or I like to go really light, like, slice of life, super cute and funny. Like, mm. I, like those are the two sides that I like. And this falls, like, really weirdly in the middle for me, where I just can't quite get enough of anything to really like any of it. A lot. I don't know. But, I, don't I mean, you know, we'll see where me, it goes. Um, I guess for me, this is, like, 
yeah, the, the pacing is kind of weird, but besides that, like, it's like, I'm actually, I'm enjoying watching this weekly because, like, because I'm in no, I'm in no rush for the story to, to continue. I don't know, I guess, like, I'm just enjoying, I'm just still enjoying it every week, so I'm in no rush to continue the story. I'm also not too nervous just because, like, we know we have 24 episodes, 24, 20, I think yeah. we have 24 with yeah. this, so, so two seasons, they actually basically. have, like, yeah, so they're actually giving more time, so I'm not too worried about them, like, speedrunning this. And I think uh, hopefully they'll be able to kind of go in depth and explain like a lot of things more, and just like be able to build that connection with those characters. It's just, it's just like it's the shot and jump like um, style where it's like really weird beginning because like you have to I guess like they did they they try to do the most interesting thing in the beginning and then like it just went to a lull where like the author is trying to regather his thoughts before he continues the next arc. Yeah, because you can like you see this much more in manga because like. Because um because it's weekly or monthly that like there's there's like you know the the, the first arc and then there's always like the, the break, whereas like you know light novels like they have like the first volume is usually like the first like four episodes and then like they have the next volume so it's it's much more like laid out, whereas like manga is mm-hmm. more of like just it's more of like um like was it was it like do as you go. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm like I'm I'm uh, there's not really any episode that I've hated with this show yet, and I'm also definitely like, excited for the next episode just because I want to finally see more about this panda, <laughs> and just kind of like panda, how that goes. Panda like, is, is cool, not gonna lie. I'm I'm assuming he must have been cursed or something. Like I mean, to become that, right? <laughs> Probably. I want to learn more about the girl that got introduced in this episode. She kind of reminds me. I feel like her personality is going to be like a cross between Shinobu and Hanji from Attack on Titan. <laughs> like I feel like she's going to be pretty cool, and I'm excited for her. And still, I actually I still like like the humor in the show too. Like I, I think it just plays off really well. Yeah. Like yeah, the whole thing where she's cool. like basically coming off as cold. She's like, "Oh, why are you guys acting like you're out of weight? This like basically like somebody just died." And then uh, Pan just like. So somebody did actually die, mm-hmm. and then they kind of just broke into that whole thing. I thought that was actually really good too. But I really yeah. don't have much more though. Yeah, yeah. I definitely see the show as like know. it's like more middle ground so far. Yeah, it's just like it's not too exciting, but like I'm still enjoying it every week. So. Oh, we didn't talk about like the new uh, the new villains that showed too. I mean, we know nothing of them. I mean, the, besides the one guy and like the other curses. I kind like of understand the guy. explanation of the curse of like why he has to like why how he has to do what he does besides they just hate the sorcerers like to kill them. I didn't really yeah, get that was that. hard to follow. Yeah. yeah. Again, I would assume they'll go more into that. Hopefully, hopefully this season, like while we're actually watching it now, like at some future think, point where we. I think read because the manga. I'm just gonna wait for the fight scenes again. Just, just same again because it's Mappa too. So. Just, oh, yeah. I'm just, so I'm just riding out this pace and then just waiting for the fight scene. I guess we'll see it for the tournament arc, but I, they will deliver though. I don't, I don't like tournament arcs because <laughs> I just feel like they just never, even though they have cool fight scenes, I just feel like they never matter. So I want like actual like conflict between like, like the main characters and the villain. I don't like tournament arcs. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with you, David. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good to go. I think. <laughs> There, yeah, so I guess that's to be it for Jujutsu Kaisen. Still has the best ending of the season, still. Whatever, man. Yeah. Strand's such a hater. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. So that's going to be it for Jujutsu Kaisen. And then we'll move on next to. Do you want to do Haikyuu? Yeah, let's do Haikyuu. Okay, so it'll be Haikyuu. And again, I didn't watch. I'm behind. So this will be for you guys. It's okay. You didn't miss much. It was all about Nekoma again. So Taylor can lead this if she wants. Um, I mean, obviously I liked it because I love Nekoma, but I just felt like this episode was a little bit less, well, a lot less hype than the last one. It was fine. Um, I don't really have that many thoughts on it, but again, I might not have just been in the right mood. No, I, really? I think this, I think this will be pretty quick to kind of go over. Like, uh, I, I don't think there was that much that really happened this episode. Um, yeah. besides tons of things happening. What are you talking about? All right, man, go, go ahead. No, there's tons of things like like the strats and then the determination and then the fact that everyone's kind of growing out of their shell. <laughs> and then even even the uh, the setter was like, you know, is it wrong to do your best for your friends? You know, it's uh, it was so endearing, you know, to yeah. see, see people like go past their limits for their friends. Don't you guys love that stuff? 
I mean, the one thing I think was definitely the worst is like I still kind of hated it, like where they talked about where they were like in a way like the, the the opponents were throwing like the first set, which I completely forgot that this was only out of the best of three, which I thought, which I don't know why it would be best of three because it's nationals. So I, or you think it's like the top of the top, so you think like everything should be five, like was it best of five? But I'm guessing well, they, that's only... they have a lot. They have a lot to go through, so to to thin it out faster. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. How the format goes. Like okay. until you hit quarterfinals, I don't think they would do like a best of five. Okay, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense, and that, that's fair. Um, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I, I, I still kind of just like I, I definitely did not like this episode as much as the first part of the Nekoma. Um, mm-hmm. I thought some parts of it was. I thought some parts of it was kind of funny. Getting the little like getting to know like a little bit more of uh of his uh of his backstory. Mm-hmm. I'm blanking on his name again. Uh, um, Kenma. Yeah, Kenma. We get to know like a little bit more about Kenma. It's I, I still just hated the, the whole like I, I the whole thing where they were basically just trying to throw, throw the first set, and um, and I would I would guess that they've I don't know I just really don't have anything like I just I'm but this is finally done so we could finally move to the next like the uh, was it uh, uh Krasino. But I keep, I keep, like, I, I just keep thinking, like, there's no way we're gonna be see, be able to see like that many matches like after this one. But though, since it is best of three now, like, they could actually finish up. Like, let's say if if uh, uh, Krasino can actually win the second set and just move on, like, we could have a possibility of seeing at least one more game. No, I think we will actually. Uh, based on how they're they lined up the brackets after Nekoma won, I think the final match of the Season is going to be Nekoma versus Karasuno. Because yeah, they, what, yeah, once On they this win season? this, right? Because once Karasuno wins this match, their next opponent will be Nekoma. So, oh, uh, is it? I didn't even notice that with the bracket. Yep, I tried to Ooh. like stay. Like, I basically like saw it go really quick. I thought I thought for some reason they had to play one more before Nekoma. Yeah, I, I thought so wrong, too. Though. Yeah, no. From from the lines I saw, like after this is. It's it's them going against each other. Damn, I should have paused it and actually paid more attention to it. I just Man, assumed there was one more match. That would deserve a whole season, though, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, yeah. So I guess, yeah. So what happened? I could easily see them just finishing, like just stopping. In a way, I would kind of hope that they would stop before the Nekoma versus uh, Crossano game, if that's what happens. Because like, I don't want yeah. this animation. I want the good animation. <laughs> because basically, animation definitely, yeah, animation took a dive this episode, David. You basically, again. need a follow up to. The Shiratari, Shira Zawatori, where yeah, like, Shira Zawa. Shira Zawa, where like that was a whole season yeah. that needs to be next yeah. month right there. Yep. Which I remember going into it, Just I think that... I was shit talking and thinking like, oh my god, because that, that was at the time where I hated like the volleyball matches. Oh my god! But they right. just made it, but they made it so epic that I was like, okay, never mind. That's, I completely that lied. Season with Sh- uh, Shiri Torizawa, it's still my favorite. Oh, it was intense. It was it was very good. But... You know, Seren, maybe maybe that's the reason why the budget sucks now because oh, yeah? they spent all their money on that third season and, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and then they waited years to, to bring us up, to bring us this. Yeah. Same studio. Then, what we got? Actually, could you say yeah, you went, we got. waste all that money? Like Haki was so popular. I how, I don't get how they cannot like have more money for this. Like their merchandise too, especially so popular in Japan. Like you got to answer to that. My answer to that, David, is that they waited four years to bring out season four. <laughs> I don't know. Just this fucking anime industry, man. They make so much money from the merchandise. Like, how do you not have the money for this? Well, I mean, I know, we, David, because we, we were talking about the industry. last few. <laughs> this is why we were, the animators we were, uh, get underpaid. I don't know. We were met. We were mentioning like the pra- the past few weeks, though, that the animation was actually looked like it was like it was like stepping up its game again. This one, like this week, took a step back. Like they were. They were flashing the same scenes like multiple times in a row, and I, and I was like, and I mentioned that to Taylor. I was like, I'm, we, they just showed us the exact same scene uh, mm-hmm. for a, for like the exact same point." I should mention too, like, um, uh, animation quality is a uh, higher budget doesn't always mean animation quality either. It's usually the talent. So it's usually um, the animation director of the episode usually decides usually decides what the quality is. So. You can still have a lower budget because I think I think um I think was it I think One Punch Man season two had like a lower budget, but because they had a really good director or or animation law animation good direct animation director that it turned out the way it did. And then you know, and then you know they lost them for season two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're okay. You're talking about season one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Season two, absolute train wreck. It was just any hype I had for that show completely died. 
Like I, that, that's the show's just kind of like long gone for me. But anyway, I don't know. I, I'm I'm finally happy that they're out of like the finally like Nekoma, but it's like after seeing like just the animation, just kind of like how things were going, um, definitely got me nervous for like the next few like the next episodes. Uh, I would rather like, if if it is Nekoma versus Krasno next, I don't want to see it this season because it would just make me feel very disappointed and depressed. What's that? Like, I want that Shiro Toyozawa like animation. I want that top notch stuff. Like, because it's gonna be because it's like basically like uh the two rival two rival teams that I assume that these are like the two like two teams that we're just gonna like see throughout like uh uh throughout Q. So I want to see like the best. I don't want to see just just to be <laughs> stop stop for it was stop animation or whatever you want to call it uh shots where it just looks depressing and uh, i would i would prefer them just wait uh and then either, like either like whatever like the previous team was if maybe they can come back or if even a different animation studio at this point to just kind of really capitalize on it because it's I like mean, this is the hype arc this is the hype arc don't pull a seven deadly sins i mean at this point it's kind of a lost cause right technically this is what season four episode 17 or 18 or whatever uh if they're this far into the fourth season, I don't think it's going to get better. So, um, would you be more disappointed if, um, let's just say they they stop, like let's say they they stop the season like right be- like right before their match, or would you be more disappointed as if we saw the match but the animation was just trash? I mean, I'm going to be disappointed any regardless. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just because of how the the pacing of the story is, and mm-hmm. unless they announce a season five afterwards, like here's my prediction, right? Like, Carson is going to beat this team. They're going to do some kind of like victory celebration episode where they do like a recollection of like how, how much it took for them to get to this point, and then they're going to end the season with them fighting against Nekoma. But because it's like the the last season or whatever. Maybe Carl Suno loses against them again, and then it ends up with them like going back to school, being like super disappointed. Oh, and then God. they're oh, like, God. It's okay, guys. Like, our third year is like that the third year's like time with the volleyball team is over, but this is still Hinata's and uh, uh, Kageyama's uh, first year. So they still have room to grow and develop in a sense. So take this as like a stepping stone, you know, try to embrace and learn as much as you can from this moment and use it for the next year and then just aim higher. Like that's that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting based on like how everything's playing out with the fact that we only have like six or seven episodes left. Taylor, thoughts? I just feel like it like I really feel like we should check and see if they're actually going up against Nekoma next. Because I feel like that just seems like really weird timing. Like, what about that team that has, like, the guy with the white hair and the weird eyes? You know you know <laughs> who I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah. I thought they were going to yeah. be next. And I could have sworn, thrown, like, looking at the bracket, like, they weren't next. So, like, no, no. if they were next, it would really throw me off. So I'll, I don't I'll want it to happen this season at all. Yeah, I'll look into the... I'll, I'll, I'll pull up the episode when you guys are talking about another show. And then I'll just... I'll look to see where the bracket is. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I don't really know how to read brackets. I mean, it's if we had Brian, nervous sports, but <laughs> it's not hard, guys. You followed the line. They had red lines too, and you followed the red lines, and there was gaps. There the was lines, gaps. No. Them, My eyes just like skim <laughs> right over that kind of stuff, cool. Like I don't even. It doesn't even register. But I um I do think that like I actually don't feel super strongly about having like an intense budget for animation with um um Nekoma and Kar- Karasuno because I feel like my main attachment to them is emotional. So no matter how the art looks, like I'm still going to like it as long as the dialogue and the script is good. But like, if they were going up against a team that was just rivals that we don't really care about, like that third season with Shida, Shida, Shida Tori, whatever they're called. Sure. Um, like that one, I felt like the really good animation was very important because the characters sucked on that team. <laughs> like they were super unlikable. I just wanted okay. to see them destroyed in the most beautiful way possible. <laughs> Okay, all right. That's all cool. right, then. I mean, but, uh, like, the thing about Haikyuu at this point, I think I, I, I touched base on it last week, but as long as they keep their animation quality the same, I'm okay with it. Like, just don't make it worse, but you don't have yeah. to make it better as well. You know, maybe, maybe like, uh, time the music to be more appropriate to kind of get your, like, adrenaline get going. better music, too. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, or better music. But, again, that might cost more money. So, like I said, just don't make it worse. But like but, how David said, like this is high Q. Like they should have the money. 
Well, apparently they don't, sir. Either that or they're <laughs> greedy and they're just like like taking all the profits and just like stuffing it in their pockets, you know? Like, yeah, too. like oh, no, some well, greedy CEO shit. That, that it's always never happens. the studio that gets the money. That's the thing. They always have to... Studio anime studios are contractors, so they get paid a certain amount of money and then have to somehow like divide that money with like salary and stuff. It's the production company and the publishers. You've probably like the manga, uh, the the mana publishers and then of course merchandise and all the, and then the TV TV stations because for some reason in Japan you have to I think they I think you have to pay the TV stations to have your content air they don't pay you so yeah hmm. so again just really okay. weird and like again that's why we need like we need more flexibility of streaming but it's still rely on that broadcast format so yeah right but, so but because of that I'm always more system. I'm always more um empathetic with the studios because they they always get the short end of the stick so that's fair yeah so like i said because of that you know i'm just going to expect this to happen i don't expect it to get better but i'm just <laughs> hoping it doesn't get worse All right those, those those are my current feelings about haikyuu or just anime in general our bar is so low <laughs> i would i want to say it's low but <laughs> You know, it's 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 there's, it's there's, a, there's a middle ground. There's a middle ground. You know, like it's it's okay. You know, oh, good. I think but, I'm good. Taylor, anything else? Mm, no, I'm good. Cool. No, just waiting for Nada to pop off, which I'm sure will happen in the next few episodes. But well, from the preview, it looked like it was going to be possibly another Skishima episode. Oh God, no. <laughs> uh... Sorry. I don't know if, I don't wow. know if you saw it, but wait, wait, wait. I, no, I, 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 I didn't see it. Is that, is that okay. Cedar's favorite? I forgot. I, yeah, well, yeah, I think blocker? so. Yeah. I think Skishima is one of his favorites, yeah. Okay. I was wait a, okay. wait a shit on oh, yeah, Peter's, Peter's, Peter's boy. Well, apparently Peter is going to start reading uh, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, so he's going to oh be ruining God, that Peter. for himself. I know, right? He just texted I'm really me curious. Today, so. Tells us he's not. I'm like, really doesn't curious have to hear his thought. Tells us he's not like doesn't have time to watch anime. Just fucking reads some manga anyways. Yeah. It doesn't join our podcast. Well, that's because you can get through that stuff so much faster when you read the manga. <laughs> I'm I'm not a very fast reader. I'm pretty sure I'm partially well, dyslexic. I speed, I speed read too, but it's always more exciting to see an anime form. Like I much rather watch an anime form yeah. than try to speed Same. read a manga. Even Same. though I do yeah. like the art and manga, the art and story manga better. Right. Anyway, yeah, I get it. But yeah, that's it. I'm done. Right, so that's it for for Haikyuu. I guess we we'll move on to Higurashi next then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So... Man, I thought we were gonna have another episode of like, <laughs> you know, the, the what was happening before. So when we went back into games, I was like, oh, okay. We're, Dude, we're doing I this. was I was so confused because I thought that <laughs> it was gonna be a continuation. Because is is that how the original was? Right? Like, I'm guessing that was the end of that arc, and uh, like Keiichi was just fucked from that point on. Because I'm assuming um... uh, with the ending, he was he was possessed, and then the the cycle goes on, right? So now they're transitioning to a different route, I guess. Mm -hmm, yeah, I don't remember. I mean, the way that it ended was not the same as the original. I can't remember exactly the details of how that particular arc ended in the original. Okay. Uh, but that was not the same thing. But it okay. did. I do feel like normally in the original one, there would have been another kind of follow up episode. Not even necessarily a whole lot may have happened, but it right. might just tie a couple of things together or kind of like point your brain it'll like kind of tell your brain the things the details that you should remember before it moves on to the next arc so this right. one i was surprised that it jumped straight back into like i said like a different story but i mean yeah. it's not like a bad surprise like i don't have any problems with it um i don't really remember a whole lot that happened this episode because it was you know the first episode of a new arc i was like oh i'll look at them so playing wait, games so have this, fun this, uh, new arc <laughs> did they just reset is it back to like june something and kg like... yeah it is June twelfth. June twelfth. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And mm -hmm. does he? Does is it like almost exactly the same as like the first episode, or is he like getting a small no. flashbacks nope. of like the previous route? Completely different routes. Okay. Uh, no flashbacks. And no flashbacks. Okay. Uh, so this episode it starts out on June twelfth, which is two days after the original start date, which was June tenth. Oh, okay. Is that right? I think uh, so. So this is a couple days after episode one, I guess, and it's going towards a different route. Uh, mm -hmm. Kichi gets a call. He's awoken by a phone call. Uh, turns out it's Reina. They're going to a game shop to do a uh, a game, like a board game tournament mm -hmm. sort of a deal. 
uh, you know, they, they go through that and then um, ask thanks for everyone showing up, like all the kids in that club. They get a gift. And for some reason, each of the girls gets like this cute plushy doll thing. And then Kichi gets this like scary a creepy ass, Anna, ass doll. Like Annabelle doll. <laughs> and then we're just like, dude, what the fuck? Like when you see that shit, you just know. Like shit is about to go down, right? But then it turns out that he doesn't even keep it. Uh, I think Rika was doing Rika things and then changed the future, I guess. Because I, I feel like whenever Rika has a one on one with Keiichi, like that's when like drastic decisions are made. Mm -hmm. And instead of keeping a doll, he gave it to uh, Mion. Is it Mion? Yeah, he gives mm -hmm. it to Mion, and then she takes it. So I'm guessing she's going to be the next cursed one because. They focus more on her and her split, like, so I don't know if it's like a split personality or what, but apparently, uh, like, Mion has a part-time <laughs> job, and she works at that 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 uh, cosplay cafe, right? So for some reason, <laughs> wait, the one, the one with who the it's supposed to be. The, well, okay, you're remember. you're ruining the Taylor. Wait, you're the one ruining, with right? the one with uh, that KT and the detective guy went to earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she works there. So apparently. <laughs> No, no, yeah, she she works there, okay. and then apparently Keiichi, for some reason, Keiichi's dad brought Keiichi there to that restaurant, and then when Keiichi's dad went to the restroom or something, Mion was there, but then, like, apparently it's not Mion, it's Mion's twin sister, Shion, and we're just like, okay, like, he's not gonna buy it, right? But I'm assuming she's embarrassed to, to let people know that she works Wait, there, so she, she came up with this different identity. Okay. I, I swear... Didn't it's she... left ambiguous. Did... Okay, I thought... <laughs> Okay, I swear I, I heard Shinon before. So then when they, when when the next someone they said Mion, I was like, wait, wasn't her name Shinon? So so is that part of the personality then? I I, I don't know. Okay, I swear, basically I swear I thought her name was Shinon at first. I swear that's what they introduced introduced us as. So I was confused about the name. I thought I was remembering it wrong, and then uh, hearing I believe that, her name. I is don't. Mion I don't think. Yeah, Sono... they didn't introduce her that way. Okay. Mion Sonozaki is okay. her full name. Mion was so remembering it wrong. I swear that I remember. I thought the first episode they called her Shinon, and then episode two they, it was different. Oh, maybe whatever. they did. I'm, I'm I, not sure. That's why I thought I was remembering it wrong. I, I was like, wasn't her name Shinon? Why is he calling her Mion? So yeah, maybe I need, maybe but, I need to rewatch yeah. it. Just, so uh so she she leaves the group she has a part-time job and then we don't know what it is yet because she doesn't say it so when they go to the restaurant she meets Mion, but Mion says it's not her it's actually Xion, her twin sister and the only reason why she knows she knows of keiichi is because her sister talks about him all the time so i'm just like okay this is kind of <laughs> weird right so then you know pass forward like a, like a day or two um like, I guess they have a meeting again. And then Keiichi's like, hey, I didn't know you had a twin sister named Xion. And then, like, Mion was kind of, like, shy or trying to avoid the question. But then the thing was, is Reyna didn't know that she had a twin sister. So it's like, okay, so it was obviously just Mion being embarrassed. So she came up with this, like, identity, different identity to throw Keiichi off, which I think is kind of weird. Um, and then, like, for some reason, it's always the only one that, that ever meets uh, Xion is Keiichi. And it's, like, during these off times when Keiichi's by himself. And then, uh, I guess without kind of giving away the whole story, at the end of the episode, like, uh, Keiichi is going out to do something, and he accidentally bumps these bikers' bikes over. And then, like, it's three guys are about to beat him up. Oh, yeah, up that's right. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know if it's Mion or Xion that shows up. And then she gets, like, she, she tries to get them to back off of him, and they don't listen, and, and they try to gain up on her. And if for some reason, like, uh, there was that tonal shift. And then, like, Mion's mm -hmm. eyes became, like, super dark and, like, kind of scary looking. And then all the people that was, like, around in the area had the same look. And then they were slowly surrounding the uh, the three Packer guys. And that's where this episode ends. Like, kind of with, like, an eerie atmosphere. So With KG looking around like, what the? Yeah, like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on, you know? So I yeah. think it's part of the, the curse. Maybe the curse is taking effect from the doll, but... Uh, yeah, this is how this arc starts off. Oh, uh, so was was Reyna not like sketchy at all? She was just normal. It just switched on now to Mion yeah. being sketchy. There was, there was actually I liked the comment about Reyna where like they were talking about personalities and like how sometimes people seem a certain way, but on the inside they can actually be the total opposite. And Keiichi was describing Reyna as, like, the perfect girl or something like that. And then he thought about it oh, afterwards, yeah. and he was like, well, if she seems that way, <laughs> but right. she's the opposite. Oh, oh God. And then kind of just dot, dot, dotted to the next scene. 
Yeah. So, so we'll say that for another route, and he just goes on with this. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of foreshadowing here, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. So the one clip I ever saw of Higurashi was with uh, Mion. So I wonder if that's gonna happen in this show or, or they gotta change it. So, was I like, know exactly um, what clip you're talking about. With I'm Mion it and I think, I think Rika. <laughs> so that's the only mm -hmm. clip I've seen of Higurashi because it's in, it's in every mm -hmm. like YouTube video that says like top ten like most fuck up things in anime. And when they reference Higurashi, mm -hmm. it's always that scene. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I've never, I've never seen that before. So. so that's like the only thing I know about Higurashi is that one scene. So I wonder if I do it. It seems to be leading up to that, David. It seems to be. I it if, seems to be leading. Well, there. I wonder if they're gonna do imagine it. Imagine they'd cut it. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna do it or they're just gonna change it. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would, right? Because it looks like each girl is getting their own arc. First, they did. Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying for because technically on. this is not like this. Is like this is not the same as the original. So I wonder if they gotta change it in this like new remake, whatever. Oh yeah. Yes. I mean, they kept the major elements of uh, Reina's arc, even if it ended slightly different uh, or well, pretty different. They still kept like the like the the pivotal scenes that I remembered distinctly were still there. So, like, so all I'm the hoping scenes. it will be the same from Young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, that's all. I mean, that's all I've got. This is a great episode. I love Higurashi. Best show of the season, in my <laughs> opinion. Yeah, so far it's it's one of the bangers, I'd, I'd say, especially since I've never seen the original. Like every episode is is always interesting or keeps me like, uh, like just deeply like paying attention to the to the plot. We're trying to figure out what's mm -hmm. going on. Although the only the only gripe I have with this week's episode was the fact that they didn't really close out the last arc. So you start out like the first five minutes of this episode, I'm just like, okay, like like what happened, like. How is this going to tie to that? Yeah, like, how, mean, what was the what was the conclusion? You know, that's that's like an expected thing of like of when you do like visual novels. It's like they always do that with like starting over the routes. So, like, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and, uh, it, yeah, it, I mean, and, and again for me, it's like I mean I'm not caught up, but it's just weird because I haven't watched like a visual novel show in a while. So it's just this format is so weird. So just uh. Not not this news, but I went back and checked the bracket. Nakuma oh. is up next. Yeah. See, I told you. Yeah. The red lines don't lie to me, man. I, <laughs> I, I can't read read letters, but I can read lines. I completely missed the lines. So, yeah, they're, they're the next team up. So, anyway, continue. Uh, no, that's pretty much it for Higurashi. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on to the next. Yeah. Hopefully, um, because I think... I was gonna say, I think it still continues on to winter. I don't think they gotta take a break, so hopefully, we'll still be able to continue. <laughs> so, dude, that, if they if they take a break in the middle of this, I'm gonna be mad. They are re, not gonna lie. They are re zero us. <laughs> I mean, I won't be as mad as re zero, but man, this show is getting pretty like pretty up there. Like, yeah. if 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 re zero was a nine, I'd give this like a close eight point five. You know, oh, so, really? I thought you, you I thought you were gonna say you liked it better than re zero uh we'll we'll see how it continues but like initially it feels like 24 episodes straight up i think i would enjoy reezer a lot but the fact that they're taking a break that's what makes me mad not the show itself. Uh -huh. i'll just say <laughs> just for me i guess i guess i'm not giving the show enough credit because i still see it as like a remake of a classic so i figured like okay, it's already good so like it's nothing i guess they're doing new stuff but i should definitely i should, should definitely just as far as like, yeah definitely one of the better shows of the season and like Cause I, cause I was, I was more excited about um, Jujutsu Kaisen before, but mm. like, I, I guess like definitely, I'll probably, yeah, yeah, I'll probably be um, Higurashi, like being the best of the season. I'm not gonna count Tech and Titan just because it came in so late. So, hmm. so yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so that's gonna be it for Higurashi. I guess we move on to Damachi next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, dude, the tone of this, holy shit! Oh. What I called it. I think I was the only one who said that they would all die. Yeah, I think the only one left was Wiener, right? That's the only one that was kept alive. Only one that was, I'm pretty sure survived. Pretty yeah. sure everybody else got uh, massacred. Dude, technically the the spider chick was going to survive, but then she was like, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to get raped. I'm not gonna like let you guys kill me. I choose my destiny, and she just killed herself. So technically, they didn't kill her. She killed herself. So I wasn't really wrong, right? I mean, I didn't... I mean that's like that's like <laughs> zombie movies where I mean... people kill themselves before getting bitten. You still you still died. They, they were so. I mean, they they were so wiped out. But I, I I don't know. Yeah, but 
I mean, I, I like I totally thought that they were gonna get saved, but uh no, this 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 route seems to get darker and darker and darker, or to be uh just getting more on the on the mature side because yeah. uh they're they're bringing up um Apparently, there this this familia that's like hunting all these uh, zions or zions or whatever. Uh, apparently, they might be connected to a evil familia called Evilus, which is a, a great name, by the way. Right? Totally conspicuous. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you have Bell kind of going through like adulthood in a sense, where he he can't be this ignorant little boy anymore. He has to grow up and be able to make decisions on his own and realize that you know like the world isn't like just rainbows and butterflies you know like there's a dark aspect to you know not everything like ends well um and it, i guess he's gonna be the key figure as to how this turns out for the uh the the monsters so uh yeah i did not expect this like kind of tonal shift for don much to to pop up wow so a character voiced by kirito's voice actor actually has to be you know, not naive and ignorance for once. I know, Surprising. right? I, I like the. They also kind of uh, show, right? They they also show when when um when Bell went back down to the uh, to the dungeon, um, basically just to see, just to see like how he would react. And he basically is just, he's now hesitating against like lower class monsters now. Mm-hmm. And they kind of showed that. Um, they also kind of show. I think the they they showed, they showed a little bit of like with eyes, basically, just like just assuming that they're gonna have to clash at some point. Because it sounds like she really doesn't have any kind of uh, thoughts or feelings with when it comes with monsters. No, I think hers was more. I think her her, her her ideals or are what Bell should be reaching for. Because I think she specifically said, "If I know that they're going to make someone that I know cry, then I would kill them." Yes, like she wouldn't yeah. hesitate. And then, like for Bell, he still has issues with his conviction right so yeah like like you're mentioning he was having issues slaying a low level monster but uh he was still able to do it so he's not completely useless yet yeah. and then he still has to grow through this like growing phase in a sense so but at the same time i think it's like you think at the time but you also don't know because like because uh, isa's um familia is completely in the dark like they have no clue what's happening right so i so even if the, if that situation does end up happening they don't know what's going on Mm-hmm. So that could easily just throw, you thrust them into the whole situation where they just say kill everything, and mm-hmm. eyes being like just OP as fuck will just destroy everything. No, we we should be okay because as of right now, it's just Ganesha's familia with Bell. Yeah, like, which is which along. Is but later on yeah. though, if it happens, later, yeah, yeah. Um, I f- I feel like though at, at this point, right? If if they were to go down and they were able to resolve this on their own, right? Because like like Arnold's mentioning, like he's going to be the key factor of how this event turns out. Yeah. So I'm assuming once he gets down there and they resolve it, like everything should work out for everyone, right? I'm assuming that's the case here. So I think once he goes on there and he's able to kind of convince everyone to stop doing this, you know, he's able to get uh, like Dix and his gang like out the tower, get them convicted of like murder or smuggling or whatever. Um, I'm I'm sure they would be fine. Right. Do you think this arc is going to take like the entire season, or do you think it's going to kind of switch off to something else halfway through? Uh, let's see, how many episodes we have left? Seven? Eleven? Seven? Eleven Eleven or seven? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with with the picks that they're that they're going, which which I love, by the way, I think it's great. Um, Yeah. It might. I like. It's a possibility that it might. Right. From Mm -hmm. start to end. Um. Yeah, it might just be focused on this one arc. Yeah, it seems like they're taking their time, but yeah. I would also prefer this because I would like to actually get to know these characters and not miss and not have like gaps in the story, or where it feels like I have to go to like the manga or I have to go to the light novel or, or whatever to read it to basically kind of catch up to everything. It's yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's I, it's definitely interesting. Well, okay, so I know Ga- I know Ganesha knows of like the whole situation, but does his familia know? I, no. I think okay, I didn't think so. Yeah, so, okay, I, they, they even mentioned that this episode too. They they're like, well, why are we doing this? I don't know, but we're following him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he, even Shaki was like, I don't know what we're doing, but I believe in my leader, and then you guys should too. So yeah, this this is why they're doing yeah. it. And so, I think Shakti's pretty strong herself as well. So hey, she was pretty good in the mobile game for a while. Yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give her that. I'll give I her that. 
but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. I, I'm assuming we're going to have like those kind of uh, awkward kind of run ins where they're going to run into these monsters that all of a sudden like they're talking and everything. And then mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be just like a, a, I'm sure a bunch of clashes that are going on down there. It's going to be Bella trying to figure everything out or calm everything down. Or uh, um, I don't know. I wonder if we'll see any of the guys. Like, probably none of the gods will go down there, though. Will, will they? Um, it's possible that maybe Ganesh. Ganesha might go. Maybe Hermes might be there as well. Mm. Uh, it's a possibility, but maybe not. They did mention that Hermes has something to do, which this guy always has something to do. Yeah, so it looks like uh, like the Amazon woman, Aisha, she's part of Hermes' guild now. Yeah, and she's sure. trying to convince Ryu to go with them. And it looks like the, the guild that... Uh, maybe I'm just like grabbing too much from the game, but it looks like the guild that, that killed Ryu's guild um was evilist and then maybe like she has some unfinished business with them that's how aisha was able to convince ryu to go with her um yeah, so i, I feel like they're pulling a lot of lore and like just dumping it for this one moment so um yeah it, i mean i feel like at this point anything can go like i'm sure hermes will just pop out like he normally always does <laughs> but, somewhere in the dead hey guys yeah hey guys i'm here oh. I just try to try to smooth everything out yeah so um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any kind of like last second things to mention that what happened this episode. Uh, but I don't think I have really anything. It's I mean I, I definitely think this this season has been way better than the second season. Oh yeah, like I think it's been on point. Honestly, I feel like if this was the first like season, it would be great because like Bell's character, his growth it has been like. Like compared to season one and two, has been like extraordinary, right? Like the pacing and then like how they're setting him up in general. Like just a little boy who wants to be a hero and then he has to slowly like acknowledge how the world works. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty well done. So yeah. Uh let me see. I don't think I have I don't think I have anything else. Uh it's yeah, it's not good. Yeah, there's not much like, other than the, the the beginning scene where like all the monsters were dying. Um, there's really not much to work with other than the fact that something big is about to go down. Yeah. Oh, um, shit, I just lost it. It's uh, <laughs> um, but I believe I don't. Yeah. I'll, I'll, if I if I think of it, I'll I'll save it for next week. Okay. Yeah. But. So we should be good with Don Machi then. All right. And right, that's gonna be it for Don Machi. And then, hello, Sasha. Are you ready for Fire Force? Oh, yeah, man. Best episode ever. (laughs) Oh, I see you loved it as well. All right. Oh, man. It was just terrific. (laughs) All right. So uh, I guess we can get through this one quick because I don't really think there's much to say really about this episode. It felt very very filler, even though technically technically it's like, I guess we're doing part of like like Iris' backstory, but it still felt very filler. At least the second half is filler. Like some of the parts I was okay with, but a lot of it was just terrible. Bro, this this episode has basically summed up how Fire Force has been in general for me. The the beginning was great, and then at the end you're just like, "What the fuck happened?" And you just don't care anymore. So, yep. I don't know. Well said. Well, they they kind of go back. They went back. Well, the only thing that I actually liked of this episode, or that I took from it at least, is that it's uh people are like are actually starting to question like the religion. Mm-hmm. The, like, the religion parts of it like where there's already people that kind of turn it like i don't want to say turning against it but they're more of like kind of like getting to the part like where they, they they even mentioned like where people aren't going there to like have their weapons blessed or anything mm-hmm. it's just like people are starting to either like avoid it or they're not trying to, they're starting to not believe in it i actually thought those parts were really good yeah, but just like but the, it was like other parts of that were just completely fucking so... the one part i thought was hilarious was that villain but then they overkilled at first, like when they were first. He's like, "Oh man, I've been intruding forever." And then they basically showed kind of like what was happening with this guy. He's like, "I've been watching so many videos, looking through so many magazines." I thought, "What the fuck is this?" And then they ruined it by basically doing that that shit like after with a uh, um, was it with Tamaki? Tamaki. Yeah. So which I thought, like, come on, he just well. fell in love. He just he just fell in love. It it just shows you that true love will conquer all, sir. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much training you do. You just you're just not ready for it when it hits you. You know. Oh, God. Well, oh, going back to that's the, deep, bro. Yeah, going back to the first <laughs> part, I, I thought it was yeah. kind of fucked up that like the priest turned into Inferno because that is kind of betrayal of the religion that like this such a holy person that was a too, yeah. got like turned into like the thing they hate, they fear the most. So I thought that was pretty. That was a powerful message. But besides that, like 
the whole messaging was just this just ruining this episode. Yeah. Sasha. Yeah. Arku. Yeah. Kumara. <laughs> no, no, no. Sasha can go ahead. That's fine. I think the show tried to put off a good message when it's he talked about uh one arm guy shows up and he's like, what do you believe in? He's like, yeah, I still believe in the sun, man. Come on, brah. Um, you know, basically he's saying like humans need something to believe in, to look forward to the future, to help them get past all the rubbish that goes on in the world. And regardless of whether or not the Holy soul temple is actually uh, guys at the end of the day, it gives people, it provides them kind of an outlet and a resource for guiding them to, in some direction in life. And I thought they were touching right. upon that. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not a bad idea. All right, let's see where this goes. And, you know, and, th- and then the priest turns into an infernal, which makes sense because really the one place that's supposed to be holy and safe has now been sacrilegious because it's associated with the uh, evangelist. And that could even be a sign that the evangelist like, brah, if you guys believe in this, even the priests are going to be turned. So I was like, <laughs> Okay, this has some good story elements to it. You know, kind of, I'm, I'm digging where they're going with this. And, you know, then he just drop kicks the guy in like three seconds, like, boom, GG. And I was like, <laughs> don't usually, they, they, they like struggle with these infernals. And all of a sudden, he just kicks him one time, GG. And, uh, you know, I, I think the sister, she had the same issue, not same issue, but she had a similar thing where she couldn't believe and go to Shinra in the first season. So I thought that was a good callback to show her character development. But the cheesiness and then this whole, like, look at her smooth skin and jump yeah. on my back. I'm like, mm, man, come on. She yeah. kind of did look like that one guy from My Hero, though, who lost his powers when they gave her the the beady eye look. Arthur? No, no. no. Uh, Mellow yeah. Million Mayor? Oh, Max Million. Yeah. 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 Million. Um, and then the second half of the episode, I, I, I was just like... They brought up this guy in the first season, and I thought he had his moment, and GG. And then they brought him back, and I was like, oh, this is just terrible. Like, But you didn't think the part was funny when he's basically like, I've been in some intense training. It was just like that moment. Like, if they just cut it off like right there. I didn't. Honestly, I just think the really? show is so bad when it comes to the fangirl stuff that anytime, not fangirl, sorry, fan service. Yeah. Anytime it goes to that humor, it, it's just like, it's cringe. I'm sorry, it's cringe. I think okay. I can agree. I can agree, like, if it's basically, like, if, if it was an episode that was actually dedicated to, like, comedy, kind of like, like, basically, like, the calendar episode, like, it was meant to basically get us back into the show, it was just supposed to be comedy, there was really no point about, it, like, real, really point to it, but then this was the episode where they dropped, like, those, like, serious, like, where they actually had serious tones with it, and then they just were just jumping in, like, randomly to, like, with the comedy, like, here and there, just poorly placed, uh, I, I can, I can definitely agree with that. I noticed that, like, a lot of the mangas are more long running or more established. It's usually by like the older like artists or authors. Like yeah, I'm pretty sure like they're like middle aged men. So like I just I feel like it's just like this it's like this, this thing of like they're they're they try so hard to force the comedy and I think I think like Yeah. Yeah, they're probably past like I think they just like lost touch. Yeah, it was just maybe just the just like it's just with age. Like they they're trying so hard to force this thing that like that Maybe it will work back then for their audience, but I think I think even the Japanese audience should maybe like don't even think it's that funny. I don't know. Like I've mean, noticed, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of like, uh, these these long running like middle age authors that like that are trying so hard to force comedy. I don't you know, know man. Like I've seen some comments and people are loving this shit. Actually, yeah, really? I, I would. I, don't know. I, well, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't keep doing it if it wasn't working. You know? Yeah, it's 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 working. Maybe <laughs> it's maybe it's the Zoomer mindset. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know, but I will say I think the context of the episode being that we just came off of a pretty weak arc and yeah. I was expecting, you know what, maybe this will turn it into the right direction like a transition episode but this was just bad. So then adding the really cringy humor on top of it only made it worse yeah. in my experience. So that's why I was like to Sren's point, if this was the first episode, maybe I would have found that part hilarious and be like oh man they they brought that guy up <laughs> if, if it was only comedy not with like the the serious tones that they were actually bringing up in this one yeah but the transition from serious belief talk to this guy literally is a virgin and can't handle being around women <laughs> it's like oh man this no it's this not much- women okay his issue is that he fell in love with tamaki and he just realized it that's why he can't beat her does he realize it or does he not know it yet 
Uh, well, according to the end of the episode, uh, he mentioned something about how like professional or whatever can't be like true love, and it shows like a like a picture of, of him and her in a rainbow in a sense. <laughs> so Dude. I think, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's really stupid. I don't I don't know what the hell's going on. But <laughs> that scene would have been so much better if Tamaki gets that note and she sends Shinra dressed up as her. And then Shinra has her panties on, and this guy's like, oh, man, they're still too strong. And then he passes out. Then I would have been like, all right, well played. <laughs> Dude, it doesn't even make sense, right? First of all, how did he get that letter in her locker? Second, why the fuck would she go by herself when she knows she's like the weakest crew? And she does that multiple times, right? You've already met the guy once, and I get it. Like You've beaten him easily by just slipping and show him your panties the first time but it's like you know he's like super strong he's the assassin right he's yep. fire blast whatever and every time that he comes up to to, to see her like <laughs> one-on-one she just goes out there just all willy-nilly not giving a damn it's like this the shit just doesn't make sense so no i that's part of the thing that ruined it for me too it's like oh man yeah because I thought those would be some epic shit, right? Like when Neil's like, oh, yeah, he's done with his training. He's mastered whatever. He's ready to go out there. He stopped the sniper shot. <laughs> yeah, he stops the sniper shot. He does this, like, riding on the wall. It's like, I'm ready. And then he goes out and just, bam, yeah. loses it. Yeah. What a uh, good guy. I mean, it, this definitely wasn't, like, my my most, like, or this wasn't my least favorite episode. But it, uh, the second half definitely wasn't, uh, wasn't very well, good. Well, the thing is that, like, we're, like, deep into the season so we're like running out of episodes to go through we have time for me what maybe two more arcs or two more mini yeah. arcs maybe it one big be... one but like you're just wasting yeah. time here at least you'd hope that the fight like the last arc that we see should be like solid uh if, if we followed like anything with fire force at the beginning some parts in the middle and then the end have always been i think they've always it's, been solid i feel like the second season has been like yeah just in general was just, just weaker just because like there's Wasted so much time, Hardy. I don't know. They yeah. had, there was definitely some arcs this uh, season I thought were really solid. Yeah, a lot of them. It, felt like, it felt like the first program. one has more was more consistent. This one just felt like we had maybe one good arc, and then like the rest has been like just been flat or disappointing. Yeah. No, to be honest, I feel like season one and season two is about the same. Like the the highs and lows have been the, the same for me. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Since since I just watched season one, I can tell you guys. First half of season one was meh, but then the second half was really consistent and actually really good. Um, right. This so far, I would argue the high it's had the highest peak with the Joker episode and then the episode after that. But everything in between just feels like, oh, man, I, I feel like the first three episodes were good. I can't name any other episodes besides those and then the Joker arc that were any that I could say is worthwhile. Whereas in the first season, first couple episodes were good. And then there's a middle arc with Benny Maru. And then there was the whole arc with, uh, uh, what's his, his name? Brother. His brother and Vulcan. And Vulcan. then you had the, you had the last three, four episodes, which is really good as well. The final battle against the KKK. Um, this, I don't know. I, th- I think definitely think season two is, is on the stroke bus. Yeah. And it shouldn't be because I felt like with this, with the start of this episode, they were going on a, like on the right direction. Like the pacing was good. You were talking about because it, it was so relatable, right? Like the fact that now that instead of waiting three years, like the public already knows of like the the rumors that maybe mm-hmm. the church and the evangelists are tied together, and then like even the the nuns and like the the fire departments, they're all like uh, like the seed of doubt was was implanted to the public now. So like half half the followers are have quit or they're they're worried they don't know what to do anymore, and then like Shimra comes along and he's able to kind of like like put um like iris's faith back on path you know like i thought that was like really nice moment and it made it really relatable with the fact that you know like everyone goes through some shit and like this had so much potential to go into something else a lot deeper right and then they just edit the episode with this shit so um they they could have had this going back up in the right direction but they just flopped so hard it, it could have been better too if they just didn't have like the just the really bad uh, fan service parts, and also if they didn't have the uh, the part with just like the, the random assassin part. Like it seemed like it was going well, and then they basically just you know ruined it themselves again. Right. Yeah. 
So I don't know, man. Like it's this and Jujutsu Kaisen. It's 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 kind of worrisome. It's it's, it's weird, you know. Like you want to like it. It has good. It's it's good ups, but like sometimes when when it like it flops, man, it's kind of like cringe Jujutsu to watch. Kaisen is not even that bad, man. There's no reason. Know. I'm with Koo. That's right, Koo. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's already episode five, and I'm already getting like like Fire Force vibes. You know, that's that's how bad it is, right? Like, like it starts off starts off as no, no, no. It starts off as a banger. It starts off as a banger, and then you're like, oh man, this show is awesome. And then like as the weeks go on, you're just slowly starting to lose interest. And it's like, man, what did I see in the no, show again? I, I, and then I I'm sure it'll that. be some. And then I'm sure there'll be some kind of crazy scene or story that that pulls you back in. I don't think but then, like, as fast as Fire Force. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I just introduced the panda. It's gonna get better. And what if the panda does shit? What if the panda dies the next episode? They already kill off the NC. I mean, yeah. like, what's what's really gonna happen next? Yeah, they, they you you much, don't know. They no one knows. Too much time to this panda in the opening. There's no way they're just gonna take him out in one episode. Dude, in the opening, they they had the panda what like handing out balloons, or is that the ending? I forgot. That was uh, the ending. Okay. The opening, he's running around the building or running on top of the building. Okay, he's running around. Okay, but that's the, that's the thing, right? Like, without knowing what's what the what the future episodes hold, like you, you're assuming good things are, are coming, right? But that's what we thought about Fire Force season one, and and what do we what do we think about it now? Right? So, Jujutsu Kaisen could be the same way, right? Could be a banger, could be doing really well, and then all of a sudden. You know, it just loses its 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 impact. Like, I don't know I'm, how to describe it. I'm still gonna hold faith. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as like what like a lot sure. of the points in Fire Force, sure. but yeah, we'll see. Sure. But I, I I'll tell you this: if season two ends on a sour note, I might be like, "GG Fire Force, you had your chance. <laughs> Go to the dumpster." Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't blame you if that happens. Yeah, you you got prioritized. I'm this far. I'm. I, I'm just. Gonna yeah. Keep, I'm just I'm gonna, gonna keep, finish it. I'm finish I'm this far and. Yeah. Bro, I'll finish season two, but you know, if if, it, no, no, if it's no bueno. I mean, I think me and Fred mean that we're just gonna finish the series because we're already this. Yeah. Far. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Very, very nice. It's definitely not one of those shows I'm gonna look into to read the manga or anime or sorry the the manga or the manga. I if if the anime comes out, I'll watch it, but I'm I'm not gonna go back. I mean, as disappointing it. as it is, I don't hate it enough to be at that point. But that's because like right. I'm just. I'm in the at that casual anime watching phase where it's like I can just put this in the background and do other it has things really, too. So it has really good moments. It's just, but they just add shit that doesn't need to be there. Right, I mean, right. I mean, that's just like right. me, Shadow and Kui. We watch so many shows that we're like, we just have to. Me too. We're just we we're just we're disappointed or just have to rant, and it just becomes a show we just put in the background. We do other stuff. Guys, it's yeah, okay. Too. You, you guys have your Attack on Titan coming in like a month and a half. Oh you mean, yes. You mean they have their attack on Titan. They have, have their attack on my bad, my bad. Yeah. yeah I have shit. Boy. Everything sucks, guys. I'm just it's watching it on board. <laughs> Bro, you, yes. you gotta you gotta binge marathon. Come back to the side. Are you caught oh, up? I, I finished bra. Nice. Mm. We could always do this. We could dedicate this little part of for uh, Attack on Titan if you'd like to talk if you guys want to talk about it for a little bit. Right now? Oh, we don't have time this week, Are friend. We- are we transitioning to Attack on no, Titan? No, no, we don't have time. No, no, stretch. Bro, not... We don't have time. Not <laughs> yet, Taylor. Hold time your limit, horses. So. Uh, okay. All right. Possibly next week, Sasha. Possibly next week. All good, man. My uh, body's always ready. Also, I, don't, I don't have time this week either. So. Oh well, okay, my bad. So no, no instantaneous Attack on Titan discussion. We can save it for another time. We can probably even do it like the week before Attack on Titan comes out as well, but not today. Don't yeah. worry. You I took my call- shot. <laughs> well, yeah. I got nothing else. You yeah. guys? No, I think I, we didn't even go it that much for Fire Force. That's all it gets for this week. Yeah. One quick thing: it does seem like it's going to be going to like the next arc, though. Yep. So we'll see. Maki and her family, I guess. Yep. Yep. But they're alone. going to Africa on a boat, and they're going to meet a talking rabbit with a scarf. <laughs> it's going to be great. Didn't know Afro was still around in this world. I thought everything else besides Japan was destroyed, but yeah. So we thought about China, and here we are. China's yeah. technically yep. destroyed. It's a huge wasteland besides the coast. Hey, sure, sure. Like, sure. We sure. prefer the term third world country." Thanks. Oh, I appreciate okay. It. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So that's it for go. Fire Force. And then before you go, Sasha, um, I just want to mention because because we are, we talk about in anime news. I wish I wish we heard here because uh the first part was uh Demon Slayer movie. Um, uh-huh. So fastest movie in Japan to reach 100 million for box office. 
And so it's already um, the best grossing box office movie for showing Jump title. Like only like, you know, the Ghibli movies and the Shinkai movies did better. Mm -hmm. And also uh, worldwide, it's number two for Shonen Jump besides uh, behind um, Dragon Ball Super, uh, the Broly movie. Wow. And it's only it's only 20 million behind the Broly movie. So when it comes out here, it'll definitely probably be like the best grossing Shonen Jump movie. So. All I can say is well deserved. Oh, I also forgot to mention well too deserved. how um there's a lot of merchandise tie up too with Demon Slayer, so a lot of like convenience stores are doing like like these merchandise stuff with Demon Slayer, and it's selling out fast too. So everyone's making a lot of money there. Hmm. I might have to dip into that, but <laughs> I'm happy, man. I'm happy because the show is really, or the manga is really, really interesting, and the show has been awesome so far. So. Plus, my favorite arc is the one that's right after this Mugen train. So I want to see. I mean, yeah. is that do they just lead into the anime from there? Uh, there's but no, no announcements way. yet, but it's like they made so much money. Like you cannot like not do. You cannot like not finish this series of how much money it prints. For oh yeah, yeah, you know. Prints, so. <laughs> I don't know. Like even like I don't know. Like you gotta finish this series. Like it make like you be so dumb. Like whoever is in charge and doesn't make. The anime, you gotta be fired because this makes so much money. There's no reason not to finish the series. Okay, Mr. CEO. Like that's know, right, that's, baby. That's if that if like if they do not finish it, like th these people need to be fired. Like all of us have better business, better, business, better, business, better business sense than all of them. They will. They'll finish it. Yeah. But I think I'm not in the camp that said the ending was disappointing. I actually <laughs> en enjoyed it. So. I'm just dying to see the whole thing through. Oh, I'm there, there for the whole ride. There's a bonus chapter. I think I think it just came out too for Demon Slayer, but I don't know if you saw that or not. Mm. But I don't know how I feel about that, but I'll check it out. Okay, so <laughs> bonus chapter as well, and then so so that's Demon Slayer is one news because the second news I was mentioning is how like there's strong rumors that uh, that Sony is about to acquire Crunchyroll, and I need to uh, con contact it with how like uh, uh, Demon Slayer the anime. Is made by Ufotable, and they're owned by Anaplex, and Anaplex is owned by Sony, and so, so the so technically like Sony made a bunch of bunch of money from the Demon Slayer movie, all this hype, and they've been hmm. talking about how like they're trying to expand more into like media and content because that's like their strong area right now. So, but the well, thing the thing is, I was gonna say like I'm worried because they already own Funimation, so if they buy Crunchyroll, they have a huge monopoly on like streaming, especially for like for the American market and also other markets because because it's basically split between control and Funimation and so like uh, so I'm just really worried about consolidation and just like just having a monopoly on the like, anime streaming hmm I, I don't know how I feel about that uh because I have no idea what Funimation service is like I like the idea of everything being under one household in terms of okay you you pay let's say like it's 20 bucks a month but you get both Funimation and Crunchyroll. I'll tell you this, I, and I'm not going to go on a side tangent here with Attack on Titan, but I did. I watched the first season on Netflix because that's all that's on Netflix, and then I watched the remainder on Crunchyroll. Much more enjoyable to watch on Netflix because of the skip intro button. Um, sometimes on Crunchyroll, when I'd load it up, it would be fuzzy for like the first 20 seconds of an episode, <laughs> and then finally... And then there's even weird subtitle differences. For example... Um, the magic school bus lady, uh, Hanji. So her name <laughs> what? on, she just reminds you of a magic school bus lady, Miss Frizzle. Um, I mean, but go ahead. So on Crunchyroll, H A N G E. Yeah. And then Netflix, H A N J I. Not sure why they went with that difference. And I'm not sure if there's other potential subtitle differences, but uh -huh. I just remember from a streaming standpoint, Netflix so much better in terms of hot, that, hot. so the J I is the literal um pronunciation of her name, but the G E is like okay. what her real name should be like. Like in German? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Like either oh, way. Yeah. But I'd be I'd be pretty content with that because I'm also tired of PlayStation. Every time you open it up, the T V video tab, they give you all these icons that you can't delete. So I'm like, I don't even open up half of these. Like <laughs> Just give me That's one true for my too. anime. Yeah, that, that really sucks too. Yep. So, um, so the only thing I'll say too is that like if 
uh, right now, um, licensing fees for streaming is really expensive because there's the competition, so mainly between Control for Animation, but also between like, Netflix and Amazon. So there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is, like, if there's less competition, then, like, the fees won't be as high. And so t potentially oh, the anime studios will lose out. So I feel bad for them. The only the other thing I'm worried about is just, like, if there's no competition, there's, I think, just got to increase the price. Kind of like how Netflix just recently increased their price. Like, they just got to slowly, like, do that, just do, like, a dollar per month increase. Because uh, Country already did that a couple years ago. And so when there's no competition, I can see them just slowly increasing the price. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. Yeah, I mean, they do it every two to three years. I remember Netflix was like nine bucks for a few years. Then it was 11. And now it's probably how much? It's 17. Four, it's all uh, the, the, the the mainstream ones like 14 and the high tier ones like 18 now. So, OK, I mean, it's going to happen because these a lot like Netflix is hemorrhaging a lot of money because they're yeah. I think they're like, put like four billion into new content. Uh, you know, they're not 10, making four billion, 10 billion now. 10. Thank you. Yes. So. I mean, at the end of the day, the inflation's one thing. Then there's their rising costs. So it's going to get passed on to the consumer one way or the other. Um, you just, you know, you hope, like you said, that there is competition around to keep it level. But I don't know. Like, I've only watched a couple anime on Amazon as it is. Like, not my go-to for anime. Netflix, the same thing, just because of the limited amount of seasons. Yeah. So I'd prefer, it, even if you do have to pay a little bit more premium, if Sony kept their engineers... And you know, gave those Crunchyroll guys actual benefits. And well, didn't stick them in cages. The thing too is that um, Sony so far, <laughs> oh my god, so so far, uh, because they bought Funimation, they haven't really changed much about like they've been very hands off. So I don't know. Oh, I guess okay. so. The, the only thing is like I can see I guess nothing change or whatever Crunchyroll was gonna do, they probably got to say the same. So mm. so like okay. so I'm just I don't really the only thing is, I just I just don't see it getting better. I just see either just staying the same or getting worse. That's like my only concern. And then the price goes up. Yeah. Okay. And like how? But yeah, that would be terrible. I guess like the thing is before is that um, uh, when because um the, the whole corporate thing was controls like they were, they were just part of this weird like because it started as this, like kind of like a, like venture backed and then they got bought by this other media company and then eventually got rolled into AT and Warner and then they get, Warner got bought by AT and T so technically they're part of AT and T so all this like all this like acquisition led to like a bunch of a cost cutting that's why like like their website sucked for a long time because like they kept laying off engineers because part of like cost cutting so maybe that's terrible maybe like manfred style the only thing i'll say is like i mean i think cause sony for sure say they want like they want to push more into anime they already announced that whereas like where at&t doesn't know what the fuck wants what it wants to do with like hbo max and all that stuff and they're they're so bad at the media management so like that's the only upside is that like I I trust Sony more with like with the content stuff than than AT and T or Warner, so. As long as they're not naming anything besides PlayStation, dude. Sony's headphones have the worst names Xperia. ever. They're like WX four hundred, and then that you know that YouTuber that does all the tech videos like MKHB uh, or something yeah. like that. Marquise Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He did one about like why Sony's phones aren't selling. He's like, have you even heard of these? The naming sucks, all this stuff. I'm like, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, hopefully Sony can do that well because 90% of the time, especially now with a kid, 100% of the time, my PlayStation is used for streaming services, not for video games at all. Yeah. So we'll see. Sure. So we shall. That's basically my PlayStation too. It's just a, it's just a Netflix bot. Yep. Listen, man, in the wise words of Attack on Titan Season 2 opening theme, Shinzo wo sasageo, sasageo. Yes. <laughs> Translation, please. I, Dude, I have no idea. I don't know <laughs> any of those words. So. It's just, I think, I thought the first intro was really good, and I was like, dang, that's so good. But th that, that one, oof, that one's top. <laughs> well, Okay. Bro, yeah. I don't know. Nothing's gonna beat the season one intro, bro. Just gotta tell you. Uh, see, I I, I, I think the way, first thirty so. seconds of season one intro are awesome, but after that, it kind of tapers off for me. It's still really good. I, don't get I me like wrong. I like the season the animation from the, the intro for season one a lot because it sets up sets True. up the hype. But I can go either way with either, think, either song. As a song, though, this one goes in my top five. Like <laughs> no one, no no one's gonna mess with Full Metal Alchemist again. But you know. 
this this one is top five for sure. Okay. okay. So, so that was that. that was level, again more <laughs> more standard to anime news. Um. So, uh, I think that's it for like our main shows. Cool. If you want to say anything for the other shows before you have to get off. Um. Well, there's really not much to talk about, right? What else have you watched uh, this week that you want to talk about then, or just any quick updates or? All right, you know, like with a hundred, uh, with the million lives, standing on million lives, uh, it's uh, since you guys haven't watched it yet, I'm I'm not gonna talk about it, but uh, it's basically leading up to uh, like uh, like a big plot device at this point. Uh, they're still trying to figure out exactly what their quest is because the original quest was to explore five percent of the map and deliver the the goods. And the goods, um, they finally come into question is uh, it's it might be a group of people that they're supposed to transport to to the town that they're supposed to go to and kill them for uh, heresy. Oh, damn. Yeah. So now they're trying to figure out what they're supposed to do to fulfill the quest properly. Um, otherwise, before that, it was just basically the backstory of the, the warrior chick. Um, she has a fear of like killing people like she Everything. doesn't want to right. <laughs> but like in this episode she tries to and i think she does like she's able to like strengthen her resolve and just you know finally do something useful and she actually killed people and so that was pretty much it but i don't know it's um without anyone else to talk about it's it's there's not much to talk about um i'll be caught up next week so we can talk about it then yeah yeah and then uh, Ike Bukuro, um, it's still okay. It's all right. Um, this last episode was sad. <laughs> Dude, where's my Gang Wars? I'm not, I'm not trying to watch the show to catch feelings, you know? <laughs> this had more, like, gang-related <laughs> stuff in it than the other ones. I guess, but there was, no, there was no, like, conflict or anything. It was just resolution. No. It's just... yeah. Hey, have you seen my son? He was in a gang five years ago. If he was still alive, he'd be around your age. Well, if I had a father, he'd be around your age too. Like, all right, dick. Um, but anyways, yeah, like it was it was actually a, like a pretty like heartwarming story about like mm-hmm. like a good father, but I guess he didn't know his son that well. Turns out his son was a gangster, very violent, had a lot of like violent tendencies and uh yeah, he was just looking for his son because, you know, he died. And no one knows, like, who the murderer was or how he died. Uh, he just fell over on, like, certain stairs, uh, stair steps. And, um, yeah, they, they just saw the mystery. And that was pretty much that episode. So, episode four, no gang wars yet. But mm-hmm. every time I watch the, the opening, like, scene, like, you see the, the fallen angels fighting against the G-Boys. So. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to happen eventually, which <laughs> I'm hoping it's soon because it's episode four, and I don't know what to expect from this show. But it, yeah, it's it's whatever. Unless you have something to add, Taylor. Uh, no, I liked it though. I liked this episode. <laughs> I feel like that's been a week by week agreement <laughs> to say you're you're getting through it, and I like it for no good reason. So yeah, like, that is quo cool remains. Like basically, if it's not Friday or a Saturday anime, it's basically you're just watching it to just get through the day. It's just like a, a time waster. So I mean, yeah. it's not bad, but it's it's not what you were expecting either. So it's kind of whatever. Although I gotta say, like uh, other than that, though, uh, that's all I had for Ikebukuro. Um, Tony Tony Kawa and the uh, Our Last Crusade, dude. Those films are starting to like. Starting to pick up for me. They're starting to get really good. Like, I'm curious about maybe, Last Crusade because I, just... I want to catch up to that. But yeah, so me, I'm just is a there... sucker for like these lovey dovey things. But man, Tony Kawa just it's it's just a feel, feel good, good man like, episode. Like the main character NASA, uh, NASA, man, such such a cool guy, man. Such a like down to earth guy, and his his wife, such a babe. I don't know if only I can find someone like her. The uh, Netsuko's voice actor. <laughs> It doesn't even matter, dude. Like, just her character is just awesome. And then, uh, yeah, our last crusade. Uh, yeah, shit's starting to pick up. Uh, it's not. Too is there bad. any good action scenes, or is it just like the character, the meaning, like the the romance between the two 
main characters? Uh, there's there's been about two so far. So there's the first fight that the two MCs had had with each other. It came to a draw, of course. And then um, the two episodes or the next episode, uh, they teamed up to fight against this like crazy witch who was like super powerful, but with their combined strengths, they were able to overcome her. Uh, so that's about it. Is the plot but, any good, or is it just focusing on the characters? Uh, no, no, the, the the plot's okay, but you're basically going to watch this for the character development okay. and then the chemistry between the two characters. That's basically what you're watching this for. Okay. Um, because you can kind of tell from the from 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 the gist of like the like the synopsis of the show, it's like especially pretty straightforward, two, like predict- right. Pre- predictable. Right. So one one person from each faction, you know, they're at war with each other, but they have the same ideals and they come together, unite, and whatever. So, but I mean, I enjoy it. I'm enjoying it more than some other shows that we've <laughs> discussed, but. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know, feels what, bad. What, what yeah, what can you do, right? Uh, but that's all I had. All right, thanks, Ku. Uh, Taylor is um, the only other show I know you watched was uh, Moriarty. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, Moriarty this week. Um, finished the um, like backstory arc for Moriarty and his brother. Um, so really, just completed that story and then kind of set you up for like what to expect for the rest of the season. Him as an adult. You learn about how, I mean, it's really basically like him take, taking down all the evil nobles. I, it, it, that part of the plot is like kind of simplistic. <laughs> like a lot of the nobles are like cartoonishly evil. <laughs> but despite that, like I still feel like the writing for the main cast is pretty good. Um, I feel that they're fairly charismatic and interesting themselves. So it doesn't really bother me too much. And I'm still really enjoying the show. Like, I'm excited to see more. Um, I actually really like the opening for Moriarty, too. But I, I, I feel like that's a controversial opinion. <laughs> I've seen people love it. I've seen people hate it. I don't remember but it I am all. a fan. So, but I only seen the first it, episode. But It definitely has a, a strong personality. Let's just put it that way. Like, it commits to what it wants to do, for better or for worse. Um, and then, other than Moriarty, I caught up to Noblesse, which is actually kind of picking up for me a little bit. I, I'm not going to talk about it too, too much more, um, just because I still don't really know everything that's going on in the show. I'm just kind of, like, going along with it. But the plot's getting more interesting. We are learning more about the characters, so I will keep up with that. Ku, I'll let you know if it actually gets really good, if you should hop back in, okay, or if I think right. you'd like it. But it was definitely better. The The last two episodes I watched were definitely better than the beginning of the season. Mm. And caught up to Adachi Toshimamura. It's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. We can just leave it at that then. Not yeah. even going to try. Yeah. I think that's it for me. Um, otherwise, I did just want to mention really quick, I've been playing that Iwai Hime game, and it's really good. I just got halfway through, and... It's very, very good. Vis- I would highly recommend anybody who hasn't played yet. It's a visual novel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one that's written by the same guy that re- uh, okay. wrote Higarashi. Oh, but then I have to read. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of reading. <laughs> uh, but it's very good. Like people, It seemed like people were kind of... Um, they couldn't decide on the beginning of the game because some people were kind of put off by it. Like, there's a fair amount of gore. I didn't really think it was that gory, but I've watched pretty twisted stuff in my life, so I don't know. Um, and then it, you just kind of have to like go through that in the beginning before all the plot kind of comes together near the end. But I haven't gotten through all of it. I'm only halfway and starting to see where the plot's coming around. And it's definitely good. So I just wanted to follow up on it because we've mentioned it like the last podcast or the one before that. It's gonna be, if I ever me. play that game, it's going to be like, a long while because they're so long. So I don't know. I feel like I'm getting through this one really fast. Um, but some of the visual novels I played when I first started were really long, so I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, like, uh, I think, like, what, a Fate Stay Night route is already, I think, like, I don't know, maybe not the route, but, like, Fate Stay Night's already 50 hours, so, so these games are long. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, yeah. the visual novel is 50 hours? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Probably all together, yeah. People have said it was 50 hours. Cool. How many hours do you have in Genshin Impact? 
Well, I'm actually doing something. I'm not reading. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah that's, an, that's an open world reading game. Reading doing something. No, that's, a, that's an open world game. That's different. <sighs> I don't. I don't need to read. I just need to right click, left click, kill things. You know, it's easy yeah. peasy. <laughs> All right. So All I think right. I think that's it for this week's episode. Another another shorter one. Hopefully, just because like I'm like so behind. Maybe next week I'll get caught up. We'll see. And yeah, we got like yeah, still got a month left for Attack on Titan, so that'll be hype. So for you, for everyone. Certainly, yeah, still have time to get in. Gonna be it. the biggest thing <laughs> of the season. So honestly, I'll, I'll be excited just to, like listen to you guys talk about it. I'll be, I'll feel happy for you, bro. What kind of loser talk is that? <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> I'll, I'll you that. Yeah. Sounds like loser talk for me. Yeah. 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 Sasha, it was, it was better when you did watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone's Sasha. turning into a titan. <laughs> oh, Sasha, I asked you, are you planning to watch Golden Kamui after? Now I am, I am. Okay. But I watched the first episode of that and I really liked it, but then I was afraid about not having time to catch up to Attack on Titan, oh, okay. so I just binged the shit out of that. So, um, because I think, because I mean, third season airing right now, I think it's also 24, 26 episodes, so got a long way to go. So, indeed. Cool. No, Golden Kamui is really good. The first episode was great, so. That's my uh. Oh, that's my uh, next I guess priority. Like, um, I guess fun fact too. It, it takes also takes place during Taisho era, so same time period as, as Demon Slayer. Ooh. Oh really? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I didn't know that. There's, and it's huh. also because you know uh, the main guy. I forgot his name, but he's like you know he was uh he was like a soldier in like the Russo Japanese War. So. Yep. That's Taisho. Oh, Taisho guy. period takes place right after when Japan won that war. So the Golden Community doesn't it doesn't have like care like characters where they have like abilities and stuff, right? Is it it's, supposed to be just no, based I'm pretty sure, off I'm pretty sure it's realistic. Yeah. Realistic, okay, gotcha. Pretty cool though. Yeah. Pretty cool. I like it. It's got a good style to it. It reminds me kind of of uh Rainbow. That was just like a complete under the radar anime. But you liked I, it, right? I, I, right? Yeah, Rainbow is really good. I've never seen Rainbow, but yeah, Golden Community is it's it's Senden, so it's definitely the more like adult mature type. Show. I'm all down for the Senin, man. Forget the Shonen. I'm done with Shonen, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm send in the Senin. Senin. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna be it for us this week. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thanks, thanks to the audience for being with us. Thanks for chat. Thanks, chat. Yeah, I know. Yep, like, thanks, we, didn't, we didn't go that long this thanks, week, chat. so hopefully, yeah, hopefully we have yeah, more. It was a, it was a fairly shorter week. I'm guessing next week's gonna be longer when the like, show Because I was behind, up. and also I was kind of rushing it just because like I didn't want. to Go to go on too long, so gotcha. for all our uh, Latin American people, I just want to say gracias a Dios, gracias a tu papá y tu mamá, muchas gracias. <laughs> I'm assuming you said something about a mom and a dad. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Sash. No, not at all. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'll uh, I'll confirm with Johan later. Yeah, dude. So I want to thank the panel for joining <laughs> me this week. Thanks, guys. It's always fun having you no here. Problem. Even though again, hey, like, man. even though again, I didn't contribute much this week. Hopefully, he'll get caught up later i think i think hey, for sure i think for sure winner like for winner for sure i'll do way more committed and actually be able to contribute more so when attack on titan starts is what you're saying yep i mean winner no, in general hey, just keep okay, sending right? those 28 dollar checks and yes. I'll showing up. Yes. at this point i think it's 28 cents but you know we'll, we'll, we'll work this just, just we'll move the digit strange just gotta watch you know 20 <laughs> more ads and we'll get it <laughs> i watched one today so far yeah. nice Back in progress. Yeah. Was so. that Nutscape one or whatever it's called? McDonald's. Oh, close Oh my enough. god, the Travis Scott <laughs> one that they keep like repeating over and over. Wait, which one? The Travis Scott commercial. They Travis keep... Scott, the hell is that? No, don't don't worry about it then. Okay. All right, we'll talk about it after the F like okay. off off camera. So that's gonna be it for us this week. Thanks guys. We'll see you all, all right. next time. Bye. Peace out, people. Bye. Bye. Bye.